My name is William Justice and today I'm going to give you my initial thoughts on DaVinci Resolve 17. I've installed it and played around with a lot of different a lot of the different features. I watched the live stream yesterday so I kind of saw all the different things that they were doing. It's really interesting. They're throwing a lot of stuff into there into the program and they're continuing to make improvements. I think my number one issue which I'm going to have to hold out judgment on and you know it's it's this is early this is early software but it's the performance and stability. I, I want software that goes fast. It's not slowing me up when I'm wanting to be creative and try out different ideas because I tried a lot of things. If I'm having to wait for things to render or things like that, it slows down my creative process. So if it can be as fast as possible, that's what I'm looking for and don't crash, don't blow out. That's very frustrating. But other than that, I really like the direction they're going on with the features. It looks a little bit different, but there's a lot of things in there that they're adding flexibility and they're giving all of us more options to create some amazing videos. And there was, there was a big surprise, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second when I get into the video. It was something I wasn't expecting, but was hoping for, and, and it just showed up. It was there, and I'm glad it's there, and I'm going to keep on using it. So anyway, let, let's, uh, this is just going to be a real quick video. Kind of just going to kind of talk through a lot of what I'm seeing. There's a lot there's of different things that I've been wanting, and have, I kind of had a big list that I was going to go through at one point of uh, different things I was looking up for. I may hit that at some point. There's a lot of crazy ideas I have about how different things could work to make it easier. But for now, let's just stick with what they have. And let me dive in. We're going to talk a little bit about the animation curves and the thing that kind of surprised me that I'm glad that's in there. Okay, here we are in DaVinci Resolve 17. Everything is looking pretty good. Um, so far, I like what I see. Um, really, a lot of it's going to come down to playing with the features, and I need to spend a lot more time and dive in, but uh, it looks like they're just continuing to improve on what they've already done. Every little thing gets it a little bit better. Um, obviously, there's always going to be things you want to work different, but for the most part, this is going to get the job done. So in this video, I'm not going to go through every feature. Um, I just want to touch on a couple little things, give my initial thoughts. I really want to spend a lot more time with it. I like to kind of dive in and really explore the features before I make a video about them. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the animation curves because I think that's really interesting and it's a powerful feature of Fusion that I'm probably going to be using a lot. Actually, I, I think I would use that on my last video for some of the things, maybe not all of it. But the other thing is the big surprise. So I got in here and started messing around and digging around through the effects library and I found something that I was not expecting. That was something that I had worked on a few months ago and tried it out and it didn't work and all of a sudden it shows up. So basically what happened was I went into the effects library and they have all the effects here which the, with the nice transition previews and all the effects previews and things like that. The effects area, this is new here. So before when you go into effects you would have adjustment clip and fusion composition. And now they have these fusion effects, which is, this is great because these effects are created in fusion and it brings the power of fusion right to the timeline. Well, a few months ago, I had been playing around with something and I was going to see if I could make this work because when you went into the fusion macros area, they always had this directory for effects. So I figured, right, let me throw something in there and see what happens. And in DaVinci Resolve 16, I did that and nothing happened. So I kind of forgot about it. Well, I, I installed 17 and I start scrolling down here and I see this thing right here, this mask two. Um, this is something that I had worked on, just played around with to see if I could get it working, never got anywhere, and it starts showing up here. So basically this is a fusion effect that I created, put into this effects folder in the macro library, and now it shows up, um, which is awesome. Let me show you what, what I did with it. So what we have in the timeline is we have a, the, a driving through the city clip, and below that I have this uh, gradient background. So to, uh, this is the effect that I created. All we gotta do is take it and drag it right onto this clip and it is a mask. So to adjust it, and really all it is is just a rectangle mask in Fusion, and I expose some of the properties through a macro. We click into the effects, we click on Fusion right here, and we can adjust the, the level of the mask, we can adjust the soft edge, give it a border width, really a lot of things we can invert it. So we can go ahead and invert this mask. Now if you want to adjust it, all you got to do is come over here, and we're going to choose the Fusion Overlay, and then this is just like you're inside Fusion with a rectangle and you're dragging it around, and this is cutting a mask out through the driving clip. We can move the position, width, height, and even give it a corner radius. Corner radius here. It looks like it had a little update issue. And spin it around. But this is awesome because this was really easy to create and it brings some of the things you can do in Fusion directly into the timeline. So I'm probably going to be doing a lot more with this. This is uh, really awesome and I didn't expect it to show up and actually I had kind of forgotten that I did it. If anyone's interested in this, I can throw it up on my website if someone wants to play around with it. It's kind of a nice thing. You can cut a hole uh, cut a hole in an image. 
So let me know, and if you want it, I will put it on my website. You can download it and just start using it. Um, one thing that I wish they would change here is um, there, there's gonna be a, I, there's a lot of little nitpicky things probably. I don't really want to. I don't really care about the difference between a fusion effect and an open open FX or whatever. I just like to hit effects and just have them all listed here. There's been a couple cases where I had different effects and I didn't. It, was it in fusion or open effects? I don't really want to deal with that. I just want to list have them all right there and scroll through and find the properties I want. But that's just kind of a minor thing. There's I'm gonna have a lot of little things like that. But overall, it's I'm really impressed with it so far. Okay, let's get into the new uh, animation transitions that they have, which is going to be great for creating titles and transitions and really a lot of other effects. So um, let's go to the effects area. We're going to take a fusion composition and drag that into our timeline. And let's go ahead and get into fusion. All right, we'll put down a background. We have a little color. Okay, so let's, uh, let's animate some text here. So if we have the text. We're going to drag that in and merge the text right on top. And let's call it uh, animate. Okay, th there's our animate text. So the, the new animation that they have in here is when you right click on here, you can do modify with, they have this anim curves. And what that does is that animates the property over the entire length of the timeline. So if you change the length of the fusion clip, the length of your animation is gonna change, which is great. So you don't need to use any keyframes. So if you want something to transition from one size to another throughout the composition, you just use this property. So let me show you how this works. So instead of keyframing, you can right click and choose modify with anim curves. And what that's going to do is it's going to from the start at frame zero and it's going to have the size of zero and then it's going to grow it right up until the end. You may not want it to get that big. You may not want it to go that far. So what you can do is come into the modifiers. When we right clicked on it and added the anim curves, it created a modifier for us. So let's go to this modifier and see what's happening. Right now the scale is 0.5 and what that means is the our text is going to go from zero to 0.5 at the very at the very end. So that's the scale, 0 to 0.5. So if we come back to the tools, you'll see that when we go to the very end, text goes to 0.5. So if we if we want the text to be a little bit end up a little bit smaller, say we want it to end up like maybe 0.3, we can go back to the modifiers, change the scale to 0.3, and the text is only going to get up to 0.3. So that's kind of nice. And you can also choose an offset. So if we wanted it to start out as opposed to start out at zero, maybe we wanted to start out at one or uh, say 0.1. So now it's going to go from 0.1 and the scale is going to, it's going to add 0.3 to it. So it's going to go from 0.1 to 0.4 right there. So if we wanted it to be a little smaller, we just go 0.2 and then it'll go 0.1 to 0.3. So that we can adjust the scale. So offset is kind of where the first value starts and the scale is how big the range is. So we'll reset that. So that's great and all, but we, there's a lot more control that we have. So if we come into the transition, um, we can change the curve, we can change the easing. So you can do ease in, ease out, all kinds of stuff like that. But the real power comes in when you come into this custom area here. So this allows you to set up a curve for the animation. So it's gonna start out at zero right down here and go to one. So that's, that's our curve. So if we wanted it to, say we wanted to start coming a little bit faster, we can take this curve right here and bend it up. And the text is gonna come in really fast and then slow up to the end. So if we want it a little bit faster, we can kind of pull this curve over. It's gonna go really fast, up like that. And you can even take a point here and move it down and kind of bounce it, let's say. So it's gonna, it's gonna come up fast, it's gonna get bigger, get smaller, and then finish up. Go smaller and come back up. So there's a lot we can do with this. And you could even take it and bring this point down back to zero. So, so now it's going to come, it's going to come up, it's going to hover for a little while, and then it's going to size back down. So what this curve represents is this is the time going across here. So for example, let's see, delete this point, delete this point. Um, I just go re we'll reset it. So let's hit mode. Let's see, where's reset. So what, the, what this curve does is it represents this is the value over time and this is the size as a kind of percentage of the scale. So if we put a point in the middle right here, let's say it's 0.5 and then out is 0.5. So what this point is, is it at the, the X value here is going to be the amount of time. So this is gonna be halfway through the animation. This is going to be the value. So if we wanted it to be say full size halfway through the animation, we pull it all the way up just like this because the top is the full value. That's one right there. 
So this is kind of think about these as a percentage. So that means halfway through the animation, that it's going to be full size right there, and then it's going to stop. And the, these are curvable, so you can click on it. You can right click and smooth it out, flatten it out, do all kinds of things. Now, the other nice thing here is, say we have a nice animation. Say we want it to the text to come in and come back out. Obviously, you can pull this back down to have it get smaller, but it also has a mirror option. And that means that the animation is going to play and then back up and come all the way back down to finish. So it's going to come up like this and then mirror that all the way back down. So you can use, we can use this for lots of things, whether it's the uh, experimented with um, tracking opacity. There's really a lot of different options. Now, one of the interesting things comes in when you want to check out, let's see, what if we want to animate a graphic? So let's get a graphic in here. Okay, so we're going to take this graphic and we're going to drop it right in here. So we want to, we want to animate this graphic moving around the screen. So how are we going to do that using this Anim Curves feature? First, let's add a transform. And obviously the transform can be used to move it around. If we right click on here and modify with, you'll see that there's no option for the Anim Curves modifier. Size has it. So I'm assuming it's because we can't modify directly the X and Y points using that curve value, but there is something else we can do. If we right click on center and say animate, we can, we got an animation modifier. So we'll come up to modifiers and it's a path animation. So all we need to do is we're going to draw a path. So we're going to click here and we are going to make a nice little path around there. Let's uh, select all the points. We'll smooth them out. And now with our modifier, we can use displacement. So let's uncheck the keyframe on displacement and we can use the displacement value to move our graphic around. Let's turn that off just like that. So what we can do is right click on displacement and say modify with anim curves. And that means that displacement displacement is going to change throughout the length of the composition. And we can do all the same stuff. We can do the easing. We can do a, if we do the mirror, it, it'll bounce back and forth. It'll go get halfway through and then it's going to bounce back. We can do a custom easing. So say we wanted it to come up like that and kind of bounce. What it's going to do is bounce a little bit in the middle and go like that. And we can do the, the scale and offset as well as some other things. Anyway, I thought that was a quick way to show this. Um, you can animate graphics and the, Best part is when we go back to the edit page, if we take our fusion composition and scale it down, the animation is going to scale to fit the new size. So you see it's gonna animate a little bit faster right there. And we drag it out, it's gonna animate a little bit slower. So this is perfect for transitions, um, title effects, and really a lot of other things you might wanna do. All right, that was just uh, real quick. Might have been a little bit rambly, but uh, I'm kind of diving in and excited to see what all the different kinds of things I can find. I've got a lot of videos lined up and I'm going to be able to use all these new features to make, make all these different ideas happen. I um, really appreciate everyone's support. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.